Ken Bennett here back in the studio to finish up that little uh, MIDI project. I'm using Cubase LE4. We have an empty project sitting here and all we have to do to get our MIDI data into the project is import it through the file menu. And there it is. It comes in with a default VST instrument that frankly is not very good. It's just a simple player for the Microsoft GS wavetable. So let's, uh, let's not even listen to that because I've heard it. You don't want to. We're going to go straight to add an instrument track. We just right click on this field and select add instrument track. And we're going to choose one of these synthesizers. The Halion 1 comes with Cubase and I found that it has a, a pretty decent piano tone. So first we'll just drag our MIDI track up to that instrument, delete the old instrument, and there's also an empty MIDI file that always comes in when you import. It's useless, so we delete that too. Before we can play it, we have to choose a, um, a program, bank information, all that stuff. It's a piano that we're looking for here, and I like this, these two pianos here, they're both acoustic pianos, the jazz and a rock piano. There's really not a lot of difference in between the two. So we'll choose the rock piano. This is going to be a little blues rock piece. So um, we just want a good sounding piano. I think you'll be able to hear it. Not bad. You're hearing a little bit of glitch, and that's because I'm pushing the CPU a little hard on this computer by recording the screen video and operating the DAW at the same time, but I think it'll hold up till we get to the end. Okay, that's a pretty good sound. Let's see what we can do in the piano roll. Just double click on the track to get there. Then we can zoom horizontally and vertically. Um, we don't need this transport thing, so the F2 key hides that. Now, remember when I made the, um, the notation file, I had certain notes accented. And you can see here, indeed, they do have a higher velocity than the other notes. But I think we should exaggerate that just a little bit. So let's get the pencil tool and draw in a little bit of an accent on the first beat of each measure. And a couple of others, and we can even lower some of these in here uh, just to give it a more uh, random feel. And try it again. And you can clearly hear those accents. Uh, it's a little bit more expressive now. So normally these things quant are already quantized pretty well uh, when, you, when you bring them in this way, although some are radically off. If we zoom in, say, on the... Let's, let's, um, let's turn on the snap so, we, so it locks to a beat. There's the third measure, first uh, beat. We'll zoom in. You can see they're a little behind the beat um, at that point. Um, over here, a little more. It's a little bit odd, so I don't think it'll hurt to tighten it up just a little bit. I'll show you how we, we can do that. Um, I'm going to select just the right-hand chords, and under MIDI, we have several quantizing options. Let's look at quantize setup. Uh, we can... Um, for iter iterative quantize, it's set to 60%. Um, we were told to use a little bit lower number and try repeated iterations. So we'll crank that down to, I don't know, maybe 40 and um, apply quantize. You saw those shift a little bit. And whether it made much difference or not, let's just play it again.
Yeah. Great feel. Sounds pretty good. So a track like this is, uh, is pretty easy to work with. Of course, we can get out of this. And now if we wanted to uh, extend that just by copying and looping it, we could control C and um, click to that bar and just add in a few more. Let's see how it sounds crossing over that measure. Of course, if I were looping it, I wouldn't put that chord on the end. That's just a, a nice temporary ending for this little demonstration. So we wrote out a part, a piano part, in Finale Print Music, saved it as a MIDI file, then imported it into our empty Cubase project. We added an instrument track, selected a synthesizer, and chose a piano program that suited the style we're after. Finally, a little bit of editing and quantizing in the piano roll view polished it up, and now it's ready for adding more tracks. That's one way to generate MIDI data without a controller. If we had a controller, we would do the process sort of in reverse order. We would first set up the DAW, add the instrument track, and record directly into it by playing the part on the keyboard. Either way, the result is the same. That's it for now, and I guess we'll see you next week with another assignment.